salesmen have discovered something. The psychologists actually have discovered it. Salesmen have put it to use. In the study of neurolinguistics, we have discovered that there are three basic personality types. Those who are visually oriented and think in visual terms and act in visual terms. Those who are auditorily oriented and those who are body oriented, otherwise known as kinesthetic. Now, how do you tell these people apart? Because salespeople say, if you want to make a connection, you have to use the same mode. So therefore, a visually oriented person will say things like, yeah, I see what you mean. That looks good to me, using vision words. Uh, uh, an orally oriented person might say, yeah, I like the sound of that. I hear what you're saying. I see a smile there. You know what I'm talking about. Or a kinesthetic person might say, yeah, that feels good. Let's stay in touch. Okay? Those are the three basic. Now, there may be some other small subgroups, but salesmen and psychologists tell us that if in a presentation you build it in order and use some of the words from each of the three different uh, 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 behavior types, you're going to identify with everyone. Well, I've created a number of scenarios that purport to do just that. So, once again, involving imagery, and I always leap at the opportunity to add a little loveliness to the presentation. This lady sitting here, if you don't mind, would you uh, step out into the center aisle and join me up in front? The noise you hear is the applause of everyone else grateful they weren't chosen. Right on up here, please. Hi. What's your name? Linda. Linda, are you having fun yet? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we'll fix that. <laughs> okay, Linda. Um, first, uh, listen as I read two or three of these scenarios and see if you can pick out the cues inside for, for visual, auditory, kinesthetic. The rush of the wind through your hair and the joyful, joyful squeals of delight from your fellow passengers. Oh, blend with the rushing scenery of the roller coaster ride at the Six Flags Amusement Park. Okay, you can see the scenery, you can hear the clickety-clack of the wheels. Here's another one. The steamy, harsh sound of the calliope organ pounds out its noisy rhythm as 15 clowns emerge from the tiny automobile just parked in the center ring at the circus. Can't you just hear the calliope, see the clowns, smell the peanuts, smell the clowns? Um, one more. You can hear the raucous cries of the crows soaring overhead as you lazily lean back against the farmer's silo, watching the rows of corn ripple in the soft summer breezes. Doesn't that make a picture in your mind? Linda, there are a bunch of other scenarios here. If you would be so kind, please read through them, first assuring yourself and the audience that they are all different and that there are no similarities among them. While you're doing that, I'll retrieve my writing surface here. Okay. You'd like me to read this out loud? Not aloud. No, no, no. Just to yourself. We've read quite enough of them aloud as it is. Many times, by the way, I will ask people, have people ask me, are you psychic? Well, no, but I've been to one. And, 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 and you know, uh, automatically, when you're driving down the street, you know what a psychic's place look, look, looks like, because they have that little, little hand out in the window, you know, and sometimes if they do phrenology readings at the same time, they'll have a profile of a face, you know, with the head bumps and the hand, and, and, and then they'll have like an awning, and, and usually a Cadillac in the driveway. And, and, and I went to one of those places one time, and, and um, I, I walked up the door, and it said, come on in. So I opened the door, and immediately I was, I was overcome with this powerful aroma of some exotic incense. And, and in front of me, you've been to the same one, and, and, and in front of me there was this beaded curtain in an arched doorway. So I, I parted through the, the beaded curtains, listening to them rustle quietly behind me, and in this new room there was a small round table draped with a lovely and very expensive cloth, and atop the table there was a crystal ball. Behind the table there sat a woman beduck, bedecked with an abundance of coins and jewelry and, and her hair wrapped in a kerchief in that Eastern European manner. On the wall behind her there was a sign that said, Your fortune told, $100. Well, I figured I'd come this far. 
I might as well. So I, as I counted out the five twenties into my hand, I, I asked the woman, and, and she spoke in that rather thick Eastern European accent, and I asked, well, well wait a minute. What do I get for my $100? She said, for your $100, I will answer two questions. Well, there's your $100, but that's pretty expensive, isn't it? She said, yes, it is. But that's your second question. <laughs> I said, all right, if you're so smart, why don't you tell me where my father is this very moment? She rubbed the crystal ball began to glow. Now I suspect she was holding a flashlight between her knees and there was a hole in the table, but the ball began to glow and she said, I see your father. He is driving a beer truck in Kansas City. Ha! Nope. Lady, you couldn't be further off the mark. My father, God rest his soul, passed on more than 17 years ago. Hmm. No. Your mother's husband died 17 years ago. Your father is driving a beer truck in Kansas City. <laughs> so now that we have established my pedigree, Linda, they are all different. There are no similarities among them. At this point, Linda, I am going to do something. Well, first of all, here, let's have you step back here just a little bit, okay. right about there. The light's much better there. Okay. Now I do something one should never do. It's incredibly dangerous. I'm going to turn my back on my onstage participant. It's for a reason. Linda, if you will be so kind, page through those scenarios, find one that resonates to your heart, one which creates an image in your mind which, which, which you very much enjoy. Or if you wish, just pick one at random. But let me know when you've chosen the one upon which you wish to concentrate. You've done that? Please place the rest of them face down uh, with the others. Good. Now, Linda, please concentrate. I want you to, 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 to imagine in your mind every single uh, uh, detail of that scenario. See it in your mind. You can focus on one or two or three details at a time. Yes, 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 yes. Now, obviously, the reason I, I turned my back is I, I didn't want anyone thinking that somehow I had, I had uh, taken a peek, which it's obvious I haven't yet. Okay. <laughs> I'll go slower. Um, actually, I'm, I'm having a certain amount of difficulty. Uh, Linda, I need to turn around just for a moment. Would you place the one you're holding face down on top of the others, please, so I can safely turn around? I need to show you a, uh, a, a little uh, a concentration technique, okay? Place your fingers on your temples. Rub slightly as you visualize the item, the, 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 the scene in front of you. Close your eyes and concentrate. Mm -hmm. Good. Good, good, good. Keep concentrating. Yes. Yes. Good. I'll fill in more details. Concentrate on those details for me now. Wait, let's see. Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Good. Oh, you're excellent, Linda. You're doing a beautiful job. You're doing a... Linda, open your eyes. Will you describe for me, please, in your own words, the scene that you have in front of you now? Well, it's... Um Minnesota, it's a harvest moon, a canoe on a lake. I think we'll call that a hit. All right, give this lady a hand. Thank you very much, Linda. All right, thank you. Marvelous. Well, my drawing doesn't do it justice, but I think you'll agree that this is a really neat piece of business. It's effective because it's done in two parts. It's a binary. Uh, presentation. Um, oh, I just heard Leo Boudreau wake up across the country. It's not that kind of binary, Leo. Binary means in two parts. The first part is the crucial part because what has happened here is let me uh, just familiarize you with these scenario cards here. 
The first three that I read, uh, well, you heard them, okay? They're all different, all dummies. The last ten are also all different, and you'll agree there is no similarity between them. <laughs> Actually, there is. Listen for it. Uh, here, here's a nice one. A hearty red wine complements the pungent aroma of garlic and spices rising from your dinner plate as you add freshly grated cheese to your generous serving of spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> Here's another one. The aerated stream of warm water bubbling at full volume from the tap into the kitchen sink drowns out all other sounds as you rinse the last few strands of pasta sticking to the stainless steel colander. The sounds of gunfire and the smell of burnt powder from the adjacent shooter's lanes become an annoying background at the pistol range while you contemplate what might have caused you to scatter your shots over the entire target. Sidestepping carefully to avoid slipping in the oily, iridescent puddle of dirty black water, your shoe leaves a perfect wet footprint on the cast iron manhole cover in the center of the crosswalk. It's halftime on Super Bowl Sunday. Your mouth begins to water in anticipation of tasting the first slice cut from a large, piping hot pepperoni pizza just delivered to your front door by Domino's. I want you in every audience. Oh, here's one. As you stand on the perfectly manicured green of the fifth hole at Augusta, Carefully lining up to put your white Titleist golf ball into the hole, the only sound is a quiet buzzing of bees in a nearby hive. <laughs> the rich, sweet aroma coming from the white paper bag entices you to reach inside for the large chocolate chip cookie so you can take a bite to savor the delicious, fresh-from-the-oven taste. The delayed boom from the overhead explosion splits the air as you admire the single circular pattern formed by a pyrotechnic rocket bursting overhead the Capitol Mall on a 4th of July evening. And finally, your excitement begins to build as you notice the tiny nuggets of pure gold left behind in the shallow round pan when you swirl the rocks and sand from the mountain stream in its cool rushing waters. Okay? So, every single one of these scenarios has in it an item which can be drawn as a round circle with a bunch of little stuff on the inside, okay? It can be a pizza, it can be a manhole cover, it can be a golf ball, it can be a colander, an explosion of fireworks. You get the point? So, therefore, in the first portion, when I just drew the round thing with all the little kind of dots and things on it, that could have ended up being cleaned up into any one of those. Now, you'll notice also I didn't just show it to you. So, well, I've done so well so far. No, no, no. It's just I turn it around as I'm capping the pen, and you happen to see it. Okay? I don't want any more than that. Then, all that's necessary is to learn which of those cotton-picking things she is looking at. Well, they're marked. <laughs> how else? <laughs> I mean, how would you do it? But here's a couple of points. First of all, in my demonstration of reading the three scenarios that I did, I placed them face down in that box. After she had chosen the one upon which she wished to concentrate, I asked her to place them face down with the others, and she put it face down in the box. This is important, you see, because I want to know exactly where to look when I turn around. I don't want to have to be, where'd you put the damn card? Okay, I want to know. So then when I tell her it's time to show you a technique for concentration, place the card aside face down. Where does she put it? In the box. Now I'm all set. I turn around, turn my back to the audience, because you can't see where I look, right? There's only one person who can see where I look. I'm looking at her. She's Linda. She's right there. So what do I do? I tell her to close her eyes. <laughs> I love America. Okay. Now, just in case, okay, just in case I do something else, I hope you notice, I take off my glasses, which normally makes me blind as a bat. Sure, at a distance, I can see fine up close. And the glasses just go right there on top of the pile. Now, if I don't need that look, or if I'm not sure, if I've said, concentrate, close your eyes, and I look over there and I see that 
the mark, and I'll tell you about the mark in a second. Then without the glasses, I go ahead and finish. But if I feel I just don't quite have a good enough look, I just reach over, grab my glasses. That certainly gets me close enough, and I'm done. But the fact that I took my glasses off, people think, well, that guy's blind as a bat. He can't see, okay? Then I walk forward and, and, uh, and complete the illustration by modifying slightly and filling it in. All right, and each one of these scenarios is written in such a way as to make a nice visual look. All right, and I might add that each of these scenarios is totally and fully written up in the lecture notes. Okay, um, but the uh, the marking on these is very very simple. I mean, this is uh, this is it uses the uh, purloined letter technique, the hide it in plain sight technique, and it it really is a, a delightful technique at that. Uh, because these are marked. It's very easy to see the mark when you look for it. It's down here in the corner. It's where it says copyright 1981 Syzygy. This one says copyright 1986. This one says copyright 1989, 87, 93, 90, and so on. Okay? So the last digit of the copyright, it's psychically invisible. People just don't see this anymore. Um, and, and, and Larry Becker was the first one I know of to, to use this idea. Um, now you're wondering, yeah, but now I have to remember which number goes with which draw. No, you don't. See, I've, I've constructed the scenarios in a way that it makes a simple mnemonic, a memory hook, and you do it by rhyming, like this. One is a gun. Oh, yeah, that's the target, full of holes. Two is a shoe, leaving the footprint on the manhole cover. Three is a tree on the far side of the Minnesota lake with the full moon. Four is a door where the guy knocked and delivered your pepperoni pizza. Five is a hive where the bees are buzzing quietly in the background as he lines up to make his putt on the fifth hole of Augusta. Six sticks to the inside of the colander as you rinse it out. Seven is in the heavens where the fireworks explode. Eight on a plate is how many meatballs there are with that spaghetti. Nine is a mine as in a gold mine where you're panning for gold. And ten, oh, that zip is a chip as in chocolate chip cookie. What do you think? Um, thank you. This, this piece uh, is, is the brainchild of, uh, of a very creative uh, character. Uh, he uh, is uh, a member of the staff at uh, Auburn University. And his name is David Himmelrich. And he therefore calls this the Himmelrich Maneuver. <laughs> yeah, I know you'd feel the same way. Uh, 